Nolagent here, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at the weather wool all around jacket and comparing it to the Filson Mackinac Cruiser and the Filson Double Mackinac Cruiser. Let's go check these things out and see what the best option is for all of you out there, or what's the best option for me at least. Welcome to Nolagent. Let the good times roll. So the weather wool all around jacket. Plenty of great reviews and fantastic things I've seen out in the world online and otherwise saying what a great, great piece of kit this is. So I got one from their lending library to give it a little chest of my own. So um, it is a great jacket, but it's not perfect. And they're still iterating, making uh, new versions so this is their second version, I believe, so far. Now, uh, one of the things I noticed right off the bat is uh, this little flap right here doesn't quite match up. It's uh, off. Maybe it's just the way my body is. Uh, I don't know. So for uh, a jacket as expensive as this one, I would expect a little more uh, attention to detail with it being more symmetrical there. So that, uh, Gives me a little little uh, pause of, hmm, is it my body or just maybe it wasn't quite sewn the way it was supposed to be? Granted, this is a used jacket from the Living Library, so it could have been put through some hard times that maybe got it a little uh, pulled out of shape. The collar actually was uh, kind of not quite looking so good when I got it either, so I did a little uh, steam press to get this collar looking better. Now we uh, have these nice military slot buttons here, and uh, I am familiar with slot buttons. I've had it on some other clothing, for example. I really, really love my Arctis brand clothing that I've got, which also features these slot buttons. And these slot buttons have been very fantastic. So definitely a fan of the slot buttons. So with these slot buttons, you've got the ability to either wear it just with the buttons or you've also got a zipper and the zipper is slightly offset so that way when you close it up with the buttons the buttons look like they're even in the middle for you now this is a super heavy duty zipper and so you've got it so you can also unzip it from the bottom which is useful if you uh you know need to be riding in something or otherwise need to get two pockets and things inside so that's a useful thing to have although I've had a little trouble with how absolutely huge this zipper is. It is a ginormous zipper. I have uh, I wear cargo pants pretty often and uh, this zipper is so big it often catches on the pockets of the cargo pants. So be a little cautious of that issue. And uh, another uh, thing I've got is there's no pockets under here. I'm like, wait, they're just seems like there should be pockets in here on the outside. There are pockets on the inside. On each side, they zip. The zip close from the side up at the top and also on the bottom on the inside. Now, these look like pretty large pockets. Unfortunately, I can't fit my cell phone. Now, granted, the cell phone is one of the larger ones you can get. This is the S22 Ultra from Samsung. So the Galaxy S22 Ultra, just I can't get it to fit inside this pocket. It looks like almost it will go, but these uh, zippers create a gap to the point where I cannot get it in any angle or direction, top or bottom. So I've uh, really tried hard to get it in every direction and angle, and it's almost to the point I think it's gonna rip the material. So I have to say, that is one huge, huge disadvantage for me because I love to carry my phone on my internal pocket because if you're all layered up when it's cold outside, it's important to be able to get to your phone quickly and my interior pocket is where I like to keep my phone and my wallet typically. Uh, now, you do have these other great pockets. They have three buttons and a zipper. Um, I think I have uh, found I pretty much just button one of these buttons instead of all three just so you can unbutton it then you've got a zipper right here also to unzip and get your stuff out now i've uh got the weather wall 
watch cap in here. Ooh, 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 ooh. So we'll check that out in a little bit. But um, these pockets are also a little smaller, I thought, than they appeared. Now, I can't fit my phone in these pockets, thankfully. Now, can I fit my phone in these pockets with a watch cap? That's a little, uh, a little more challenging because, ooh, let's see. Ah. Okay, ah, ah, okay. So both the phone and the watch cap went in that pocket. Now on this side, what could I possibly have in this pocket? Oh, I've already, ah, there we go. So this side, pair of gloves. So you uh, can get a decent amount of stuff in these pockets. They do uh, have a little more bulge in it than I thought they might. Uh, it seems like with a jacket this uh, rather robust, and strong, I would expect a little more expansion, but uh, you know, overall it's still pretty decent. Now, just like with a lot of other jackets, Filson for example, you also get some nice hand warmer pockets right here on the side. So that's another useful thing. Now, uh, the hand warmer pockets though, my phone will fit in it. It's just, uh, it's not a very deep pocket, so I would not consider this secure. It's good for your hands. I don't think I'd keep keys or anything else on it because the minute you sit down, just the way it's angled, I think it would just fall out. So hand warmer pockets, I would stick to uh, using to warm your hands. I'm just not uh, particularly comfortable with keeping anything in these hand warmer pockets just by the angle and way they are. Now keys, anything else, I think certainly these lower pockets, the interior inner pockets also would be perfectly acceptable for keys and smaller cell phones. Unfortunately, uh, being at the top of the size spectrum for cell phones, it's not working for me. And that's, that's a huge, huge loss because I really like to carry my cell phone right there. Now, if I wear a vest, I've got this Filson vest on, can uh, pop my phone in there. And that's what I've ended up doing mostly. So that's probably my biggest disappointment is the pocket sizing on the inside did not quite work out. Even just a, uh, maybe if they made the opening from the top, it would have uh, gone in instead of from the side. So just another thing for Weatherwolf to consider is making these pockets just a slight tad bit bigger so that this uh, larger generation of cell phone sizes will fit in there. So, uh, you know, certainly that's uh, one size never fits all, of course. So that's not a huge thing for most people, but uh, you know, for what I do, taking pictures, going out there, filming stuff, it is important for me to be able to get access to that quick draw camera if I need it. Now, uh, this jacket also has some nifty features where you have these little side vents on the side. Now, they do have an anorak that has zippers on the side. I uh, think maybe some zipper side zips on this could be useful to maybe uh, get a little extra ventilation. That could be a, an interesting feature to add. So it is, uh, Definitely something where you do get that extra little flap and that little kind of space there that does give you a little more flexibility. And you do have the vent on the top that goes all the way around, which this is very similar to the Filson Double Mackinac, which we'll take a look at that here in a little bit because that's probably the nearest comparable item that you can uh, compare this jacket to to any other jacket. Some other people have already done that. So, uh, you know, overall, you know, it's a pretty wonderful jacket, I would say, as far as functionality, as far as keeping you warm, but within a very wide range of temperatures. So I have worn this thing in uh, 65 degree weather all the way down to 30 degree weather. Um, on Weatherwolves website, they say there's a 50 degree Fahrenheit or 28 degree Celsius uh, range of comfort that you can wear this jacket, which from my experience, it breathes really well and I've never been overheated or cold with it because it does seem to really regulate very well with this 100% wool and this special fabric that they use with the Rambouillet sheep. So this is a fantastic, fantastic fabric that I've really enjoyed. And uh, you know, it's got a lot of possibilities here. And you know, even with some of the things so far that I'm a little uh, not quite in balance with the design, I still have been enjoying it. Now, another uh, quick thing to check out here is we zip this thing up and you have this top button for when it gets really cold and you really need to protect yourself. They also sell a hood separately. It is a monster hood. 
So I don't know if in my environment I would ever need it, but ooh, just this collar is quite nice, see? And then you've got this throat latch where you can come across and really get cozy. Mmm. So now I am full, protected, cozy, warm with the throat latch here. So, ooh, the ears are quite protected. So this is a wonderful function here. Now there is a little problem. It is a little on the edge of being too tight for my big neck here. So let me show you another challenge I found in my examination of how this thing works for me. Okay, so now I have my level two military grid insulation under here and it's really tight. The thing comes up to my neck underneath here and the throat latch to me is uncomfortably too tight. So, ah, it's choking me. So, ah, oh. So, uh, just for insulation purposes, when you're going to layer, uh, I find the throat latch is a little, little too much for, at least on me, ah, for the level two to go underneath it if you're going to use that throat latch. I actually had asked Weatherwall if they had the option to maybe get a little bit of a larger throat latch. I never heard back, so I, I don't know if that's a possibility or not. So for me at least, wearing this level two insulation layer, it just is too tight around my neck. Now just uh, considering if you're going to add additional insulation layers or even a scarf, uh, at least to me that is getting way, way too tight around my neck. Uh, so perhaps they could start offering different size throat latches that are a little bit bigger for people with bigger necks like myself, I suppose. Uh, I don't know. I've got a big head and a big neck, possibly. Now, um, that's not a deal killer for a lot of people. That's just another observation I've made, just so you know. Uh, overall, though, generally, it's a, a pretty uh, useful option. If you don't put the collar all the way up, you can always put it up under there, and then it will work just fine. It's just sometimes when it's really cold, you might really appreciate being able to layer up like that. Okay, so now we've got more features on the inside we can look at. We do have these two draw cords where you can kind of cinch up the back to have a little more uh, insulation of making a little barrier between your waist and the rest of your body. So if you cinch down that little elastic cord, you're gonna get a little bit more of a barrier to lock in some of that heat if you need to. Uh, some people certainly do get a little chill sometimes, so you can get a little more of a effect back there. Uh, sealing off more. Or you could almost get a belt, it seems, to uh, do the same thing, so maybe they could uh, build belt loops in, in the future. Uh, the elastic at some point will wear out. It's very similar, though, to what I have on some North Face jackets and that stuff's been going strong for decades. So it's uh, just uh, however tight you want to get it, more or less. Yeah. Ooh, I got it so tight I might not be able to button it. Let's see. So you can go for more of that form fitting look if you want. Now you also get a cuff where you get three options of cuff size. Now I have found with the way this ends up fastening, I get material bunched up underneath my wrist, which uh, I'm doing stuff with my hands, working at something sometimes that uh, Starts to kind of irritate my wrist a little bit. I don't know if there's a way to maybe move that material to the side more. The top might be a little more comfortable. So another design feature to think about some ways to do things a little differently. So I don't know if that there, there's any option to make it a little more comfortable 
uh, as it is a thicker piece of wool here, certainly. So you also get reinforced areas here. So that's another nice feature. It's a little extra layer of the wool to reinforce. So you've got the top layer, extra cape, reinforcement there on the elbow area and the cape in the back. And then something I have not really seen a review of so far, the watch cap. So the Weatherwall watch cap is seamless as far as I can tell. So it's very comfortable and I've got a seven and a half inch head. And the problem I have all the time with so many of the hats like this and these little beanie things and watch caps is they all tend to just whoo, go and get off the top of my head because apparently they're just uh, way too elasticy and stretchy. This is 100% wool, so there is no elastic inside of it, so I don't seem to experience that. It just really fits very comfortably and stays in place on my noggin here. So I'm a fan of this weather wool watch cap. It's a little pricey, uh, a lot more expensive than most of the other type little caps you're gonna find like this. However, the fact it stays on my head and doesn't go popping up into cone head status all the time above my ears is definitely definitely worth uh, my personal comfort and not uh, having to constantly be pulling the thing down every few minutes. So I am a fan of the Weatherwool watch cap. So two thumbs up to that. Now, when it comes to the uh, Weatherwool all around jacket, I have to say I'm very, uh, very happy with the comfort level of how this jacket performs. It's an extremely comfortable jacket and uh, you know, nifty features. You know, you got these three buttons that you can button up if you want. That's a little stylish detail, I suppose. And uh, you've got a little bit of the Western flair of uh, you've got the little points here in front and the back and they supposedly designed it so that would encourage water to drop off that way. So maybe, maybe not. So this is another interesting design element. Again, I do most of those pockets here and, you know, small little things of like the zipper kind of a uh, little on the big side, heavy side catching on things. Overall though, I can't knock it on the performance overall. Uh, when it comes to keeping you warm and keeping you within a nice, good temperature range and not overheating you and being breathable, this is a top notch jacket. It certainly is a phenomenal material they use here and it really is some of the best wool that you can find anywhere. And it's 100% from America. The wool is from American farms, they're American sheep, and everything is sewn in America. Now granted, some of the sewing was not quite as uh, good as I thought it should be, being from America. Uh, you know, I found some loose threads here and there and some things that I thought maybe were not quite up to the standards that I would have. Granted, this was a used jacket from the Lending Library, so it could have been through some tough stuff that did a little bit of wear and tear on it. So this is a used model, not a brand new model. So take that into account as well, just to be fair in the assessment. Uh, overall though, uh, I've slept in this thing. I have uh, done quite a wide range of temperatures in this thing and been very, very comfortable in all of them. And I really do love the jacket for the most part, other than not being able to get my cell phone in here. Hopefully future versions, they'll get a little bit better pocket size for these interior pockets, add some outside pockets and I'll be really happy and maybe uh, just a maybe a little bit tinier zipper. I don't know if we need this extra extra huge big zipper on here. Uh, you know there's uh, other other zippers on most of my other jackets that are not quite that big but they're still pretty darn robust. Most of my military equipment at the time when I was in the army we had some pretty strong zippers but they weren't this big of a zipper so that's uh, Another little thing that maybe could be tweaked a little bit to uh, get a little more balance so uh, I don't have to worry about this thing catching on things all the time. And these buttons, definitely a fan of these, very fantastic. And the overall construction of everything ultimately does what it's supposed to do. And it's just, uh, it's flexible enough with the design so that you can find a lot of great uses for it. And in the end, until you try it, you're not gonna know. So. <laughs> They do have a fantastic program with their lending library, so you can literally, just for $30, get one of these sent to you in your size. Now, this is a size large, and size large is five pounds, by the way. So, 
they do put a lot of the uh, weights and other statistical data out there about what these different clothing items they have out at Weatherwool on their website. So go check out their website and see uh, what's out there that might be of use to you. And they have 100% satisfaction guarantee as well. So definitely a wonderful family owned business. And they even have events out at their house where they invite people to come out and check out some of their stock. So it's a really interesting, interesting small family business putting out a great product. And it is a fantastic overall experience once you give them one of these things a sample. Not perfect by any means, but it is definitely one of the best options out there right now, without a doubt. Now here we have the Filson Double Mackinac Cruiser, which is probably the closest competitor to the Weatherwall all-around jacket. So we have a double top right into this area that goes all the way around. So it also has a double sleeve as well. So you actually get a little bit more double coverage than you do with the all-around jacket. Now, in this particular model, I've only got one button. Some models have at least two or maybe even more buttons. I've seen them with two buttons. So some models do tend to give you more buttons in the cuff. Luckily, this one perfectly fits my particular size frame, my size 44 jacket in this one, and it fits me perfectly. Now. No zipper, so the weather wool gets a little bonus because it has both a zipper and button option. This, uh, you know, buttons up pretty nicely though, and it's uh, very comfortable for the most part, I would say. Very functional, fits me very well, and I do enjoy the pockets. So you do get hand warmer pockets on both sides, just like with the weather wool. Filson uh, also has been around a lot longer than weather wool. Then you get these two great pockets here. Now these have snaps and uh, you know, apparently these metal snap buttons can wear out after a long, long time, but there's a lot of very old Filson snap buttons still going. Ooh, nice snap. This one's used, eBay special. And then, ho, 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 guess what? Pockets up here. So you get the uh, big full pocket over here where you can stick your cell phone and have a little place to stash that. Or over here you have your different little pin pockets or tool pockets in the front and also yet another little pocket behind that. So you get a big pocket and then there's three little small pockets in front. And then it also can snap closed over that and keep it secure. So that for my life makes things very easy because I need to get to my equipment and take pictures and make videos very quickly. So this very, very easy for me. Now, one thing lacking in this model, this particular example of this model, at least, so uh, a lot of the uh, jackets do have an interior pocket. Unfortunately, this one does not. So that is the one thing with Filson, depending on the year and when they were made, there's some variety out there. So some of them do have an interior pocket for the double Mackinac, some don't. Some do have multiple buttons on the cuff, some don't. This very comfortable and I find it, oh, uh, you know, kind of cool looking. You know, kind of uh, do dig the uh, groovy plaid pattern here. So it's maybe not the most tactical looking thing. Maybe more Elmer Fudd lumberjack style, but nonetheless, very cool. It's also very breathable, very comfortable. I would say it's probably not as warm though as the weather wool jacket because that thing is, uh, whoa, that wool is a very different kind of sheep. It's much warmer, it's just more lofty, and it just has a lot more ability to hold some heat in, but it's breathable at the same time, so the temperature range is also quite impressive there. So I don't really know what you would have for a temperature range for this particular jacket, because I haven't seen any stats that Folsom advertises. In general though, being in this 100% wool garment, it is very breathable still. And I would say it's, uh, you know, a bit thinner than the weather wool overall, though even in the uh, double fabric areas, I would say this is still overall probably a lighter jacket, it feels to me as well. So it doesn't have as much bulk and weight. So there are some uh, benefits to having something a little bit lighter, depending what you're doing. It's also got a really generous collar. So if you need to flip this thing up, it's pretty decent. Uh, no. Ooh, 
there's no throat latch or anything like that, but you wrap a scarf around and you can just get it up. So it's not uh, quite as large a collar as the weather wool all around jacket by any means, but still a pretty generous collar. Now you also get another fantastic feature with the Mackinac Cruiser line and both the double and the single that blows the whole pocket capacity of the weather wall out of the water. You get these fantastic map pockets, or some people call them a game pocket, but I think it was originally designed to be a map pocket. So this gives you a huge amount of extra pocket space and I like to keep my gloves and other things in there. So these are really, really great pockets. You can get a whole, whole lot of stuff in here. It goes all the way through here. So you can literally reach your whole arm all the way through and you've got plenty of space all up inside the jacket there. So pocket space area definitely goes to Filson. So just depending what your needs are, what you're doing, this certainly is a fantastic option and you can find a lot of these on sale on eBay for a lot less money than the weather wool is gonna cost. So that's another consideration. And uh, there's never been a weather wool, anything I've seen on eBay, plenty of used hills and things you can get for pretty darn decent prices, honestly. And uh, I've definitely gotten some good deals on eBay. So this is uh, definitely a great jacket. And remember, this is the double Mackinac. There's also another option. Now here we have the classic Mackinac Cruiser. So this is uh, pretty much the same as the double without the cape. You just get uh, different button styles here. Now they are snap buttons. And other than that, it's pretty much the same setup where you have the three little small buttons in front of the big pocket here. So you could put pens or tools or any of the things you want in those three slots right there. And uh, very, very nice, generous pockets here on the side. And again, those hand warmer pockets right there that are handy and these big map pockets. So those big map pockets are even more generous on this model because they go all the way to the top of the neck where in the double Mackinac, it tends to stop right there with the cape again. So this is the all time champ of pocket space of all three of the jackets that we've looked at so far. This model only has one button on the cuff. There are models that have more than one. This model, fortunately for me, has the interior pocket here where I like to stash my phone. Only on one side. I like it when there's two interior pockets on both sides to stash things personally, but uh, we don't get to have everything we want, right? And, uh, you know, overall, this is sort of a... Uh, easier jacket for many people. It's got the balance of, it's a little lighter. Now, a lot of people call this wool more like an old army blanket, which I would say that's an honest comparison, but uh, it doesn't bother me. Some people say it is more itchy to them, it irritates their skin. I'm perfectly fine with it. I got to sleep in plenty of army blankets, so it doesn't bother me. The uh, collar here, you know, not as high as some, but it uh, certainly, can keep the cold off of your neck. And, uh, you know, it definitely can be in a wide range of temperatures as well. I mean, you probably could be quite comfortable up into the 60s in this, as long as you kept it open and uh, didn't have too many layers underneath. And it's got a wide range of temperatures that you can be comfortable in this. So, I do like this jacket a lot. It is uh, quite useful for going in and out of places. So the all around jacket, uh, you know, is very comfortable as well, going from the cold of the outside to the inside of a place. I do find the weather wool though is definitely a much thicker insulating layer and is definitely gonna hold them more heat than this. So. Depending on your internal temperature, how cold or hot you tend to be, it's looking at which one of these options could be the best one for you. Maybe none of these are the best option for you. For you, maybe just a sports coat's fine. And honestly, in a lot of situations, 
a sports coat is one of the most comfortable things for me to wear. That's why I think I like this because it's similar to a sports coat in a lot of ways. And in a lot of options, you're not going to be outside in the cold that long. You're just maybe driving to a place and going straight inside. So the most cold you're going to have is between your vehicle and getting inside a place where there's going to be a lot of people. It'll be really crowded and really hot. So consider your options and dress for what you're going to be doing in the outdoors. If I'm going to go off into the woods and I'm going to have to be out there for days on end, I'm going with a weather wall jacket because that all around jacket definitely is something that is a beast of a jacket to keep me going and a whole wide range of circumstances would not be a bad choice for the double Mac or this either, uh, depending on what you're doing in the outdoors. This, I would definitely want more uh, layers underneath it though. So just like any other choice of clothing, ultimately, it's what your end purpose is. So it's determining what you are gonna be doing and that will determine what you need to be wearing and what your plan is for how you need to layer, how you need to dress, or if you're just going out on the town. Now, personally, I sort of like the overall aesthetic of the Filson Mackinac Cruiser line a little bit more than the way that the Weatherwell all-around jacket looks. It is an evolving design, though, so who knows? I mean, it's not an unattractive design. It's just if you put the two in front of me and ask me which one I thought looked more cool for the moment, I would probably point to the Filson line. However, uh, if you're asking me where I'm going to go out into the woods on an adventure on, I'm going to go with the Weatherwall round jacket because it's just got a little more performance level that I think would serve me better. So in the end, it's what you're doing, where you're going, just like any other thing in life. So you've got choices, you've got options, price, certainly a consideration. You can find these all over the place on eBay for pretty decent prices and you can't find deals often in a lot of secondhand stores as well. So it's just uh, considering you know, your budget and what you're doing, because that weather wall is definitely on the very top tier of what they're doing in the price range. And in the end, is it gonna be worth it to you for what you're doing? If you're just gonna wear it out and about around town, you're not really doing anything in the outdoors, going out for long periods of time, that might be certainly something to consider the value price option of what you're getting for that. What is your value of if it's something you're gonna occasionally wear versus something every day you're gonna need it. You live in a very cold environment, you need something that's gonna have that really high level of performance versus something that's also very high performing, just maybe not as high performing. So the Filson wool, definitely being 100% wool, is high performing. It's just not maybe as high performing as that top, top tier of weather wool. So some people do need that top, top, top tier. Other people will probably be okay with a little less. And it's just considering what you're going to do and what your ultimate goal is. So all of these jackets are fantastic. I'm a fan of all of them. And if I had to pick just one, it would depend on the activity. So. I love them all, I will keep wearing them all, and uh, that is uh, certainly a good option to have if you have that ability. If you have to choose just one though, mm, wow. Uh, a lot of people say if you can only choose one, just the uh, general all around old school Filsa Mackinac Cruiser is maybe your best option for the widest temperature range because you can layer up underneath it. Other people would say the uh, weather all around jacket would be your best option. So lots of opinions out there uh, for me. I will just keep all three options available because more choice is better than less choice. Nolagen here, and thanks so much for watching. And just go ahead and destroy this video right here to keep up with the fun.